Good health to all from Rexall. It's the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist with a welcome from all 10,000 of us. The 10,000 independent druggists who have added the word Rexall to our own store names. You can always tell us for the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows, but we're better known because we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made with the Rexall Drug Company. Many of these products are household names, like Rexall Pure Test Aspirin, for instance. Millions of users know that by laboratory test, Rexall Pure Test Aspirin disintegrates completely faster than any other leading brand tested. And quality like that is what we family druggists are talking about when we tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Scharf and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Last week, if you remember, Phil was unprepared for his opening program. And Mr. Scott, the sponsor, was so furious, he's insisted that from now on, Phil keep regular office hours. He's assigned him an office in the Rexall building, and this is to be Phil's first day there. Alice, I don't like this. Do you realize I'll have to get up at 7.30 every morning like this to get to the office at 9? Oh, it won't hurt you to keep regular hours. I keep regular hours now. Every night, I go to bed at 4 o'clock in the morning and get up promptly at 3 in the afternoon. <laughs> I meant to ask you, what do you and those musicians do till 4 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> We're making a patchwork quilt. <laughs> Look, honey, Scotty can't tie me down to an office routine. I ain't gonna come in at a certain time, leave at a certain time, and eat at a certain time. He can't treat me like a machine. What does he think I am, an autotonomon? <laughs> well, the way you talk, you'd think living a regular life was going to kill you. Well, it ain't going to do me no good. It'll ruin my health. Imagine getting to the office at 9 o'clock and working hard all day. Why, can you imagine what will happen by the time the cocktail hour comes around? <laughs> I'll be too weak to lift my buttermilk. <laughs> Bad enough working in an office, but happened to get up Gee, at Daddy, that time. you have to go downtown. If you're going to be gone all day, who's going to give us our music appreciation lessons? <laughs> well, I'll get somebody to fill in for me. I'll get Toscanini or Deems Taylor or one of them cats. <laughs> Phil, you've been teaching the girls music. Sure. I've been a musician for many years, and I'm imparting to them all of the musical knowledge I've acquired. <laughs> A uh, that you could do in a one 15-minute a lesson. Don't be a wise wife. <laughs> By the way, did you see Fallen Angel? <laughs> <laughs> I've taught the kids a lot about music. I'll show you. Look, girls, sing the, uh, sing the scale for your mother. Do, re, mi, fa. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you like that rendition of the scale? What happened to the rest of it? Is there more? <laughs> Girls, what kind of music has your daddy been teaching you? All kinds of songs. Ghost Riders in the Sky, Look at Me. And he's going to teach us the alphabet song as soon as he learns it. <laughs> you mean your father doesn't know a simple little tune like that? He knows the tune. It's the alphabet that's slowing him down. <laughs> And here, don't forget to take your present. What present? Well, we all bought you something for your first day at the office. I bought you this briefcase. Willie bought you a green eye shade. <laughs> and Mother got you this lovely celluloid collar with matching cuffs. Oh, how utterly chic. <laughs> 
I thought it was kind of cute of Mom to buy you that celluloid collar and cuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's very funny. <laughs> oh, that mother of yours, she's a clip. She's quite a comedian. <laughs> yeah, I remember when she was a straight man. <laughs> Look, honey, do I have to go down to the office? Why can't I? I'll get that. If the musician's union ever finds out I'm getting up during the day, they'll drum me out of the core. <laughs> Yes, mister, what can I do for you? I'd like to see Mr. Harris. I'm Mr. Harris. You're Mr. Curly, I'm Frankie. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> How do you like that? Yeah. We've been playing together for 20 years. This is the first time we've seen each other in broad daylight. <laughs> I hate to say this, Curly, but you don't look very appetizing at this early hour. <laughs> you ain't no crepe Suzette yourself. <laughs> what are you doing up so early? Wait a minute. Hmm? What are you hiding behind your back? Present for you. Something you can use at the office. For me? Hmm? Oh, gee whiz, Frankie, I... Hold it. Is it a celluloid collar or a green eye shade? Curly, please. You know I wouldn't buy anything as ridiculous as that. Well, I'm sorry, Frankie. I'm a little bit bothered. I should have known better. Uh, what'd you buy me, pal? A lunch pail. <laughs> Look, I got news for you. I ain't carrying no lunch pail. But it's a roomy one. See? You put your peanut butter sandwich here, your hard-boiled egg here, and your orange over here. <laughs> Suppose I want to take a banana instead of a <laughs> It won't fit. <laughs> Unless you can find a round banana. Oh. <laughs> I wouldn't be found dead carrying a round banana. <laughs> or a lunch pail. Got a beautiful vacuum bottle in it. Will you forget it? Yeah. Now, just forget it. Holds a fifth of milk. I don't care for... <laughs> Full fifth? Well, you'd better hurry and leave. Oh, hello, Frankie. Good morning, madam. Remley, it's Alice. Is that who it is? <laughs> you know, Curly, she don't look much better than we do in the morning. <laughs> Just a minute, bud. Alice is beautiful. It's just the curlers in her hair and the cream on her face that makes her look so awful. <laughs> Gee, Alice, if you've got to put your hair up in curlers at night, why do you wear those old things? Why don't you wear the new ones you got? I'd like to, but you always get to bed first and beat me to them. <laughs> now, Susan, please get started. It's almost nine now. Goodbye, honey. Come Wait on. a minute. Aren't you going to drive me down? Don't you want to see my new office? Oh, I don't have time. Besides, I have no reason to go to your office. Neither have I, but I got it. <laughs> now, come on, honey. Drive us down, will you? Us? Yeah, us. You and me. If I got to suffer, you're going to suffer with me, Remley. Just call me Les Miserable. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Phil. I'll drive you fellas down. I'll get my coat. <laughs> What's she so happy about? What's she singing for? I don't know. I guess this is the spot she's supposed to sing. Oh. I don't know. I never see this stuff either until about three minutes before we're ready to go. Let's take an old-fashioned walk. I'm just bursting with talk. What a tale could be told if we went for an old-fashioned walk. Let's take a stroll through the park, down a lane where it's dark. And a heart that's controlled may relax on an old-fashioned wall. I know for a couple who seem to be miles apart. There's nothing like walking and having a heart to heart. I know a boy who declined, couldn't make up his mind. He was wrapped up and sold Coming home from an old-fashioned wall Some couples go for a buggy ride When they start carrying a lot Others will buy 
bicycle side by side and out to some romantic spot. But when you have a the there's only one thing to do. Let's take an old-fashioned walk. I'm just bursting with talk. What a tale could be told if we went for an old-fashioned walk. I know a boy who declined, couldn't make up his mind. He was wrapped up and sold, coming home from an old-fashioned walk. I think I'll go up and see what your office looks like. Alice, I can't go through with this. Being cooked up in an office is going to dull my sparkling personality. I can't be Corell like a wild horse. I'm the wild stallion type. <laughs> I need the wide open range to roam. I won't be tethered and have my spirit broken. I'm not going to do it. Down, any... Black Beauty, down. <laughs> You hold him, Alice, while I put the bit in his mouth and we'll lead him in. <laughs> Come on, boy, giddy up. Get Come your on. hands off of my withers. <laughs> Stop trying to be funny, you two. Oh, I don't know why you're carrying on like this, Phil. Working in an office isn't going to hurt you. Willie's been working here in the bookkeeping department for a year now, and it hasn't hurt him any. Don't mention your brother to me. Things are bad enough. Now, if you forget Willie, I'll go in. Open the door. Good morning, Philip. <laughs> There's a character starts to annoy me before they get the door open. <laughs> You're a little quick this morning, ain't you, Herschel? <laughs> you been on another malted milk binge or something? <laughs> Leave the egg out of them things. They won't affect you so much. <laughs> what are you doing away from your desk, anyway? I came down to show you how to act in an office. Hmm, there are several things I want you to know, Philip. I feel it my duty to enlighten you. Francis, what are you doing? Hmm? I'm putting a few nickels in this slot machine. That's a time clock. <laughs> how do you like that? I've been waiting for three cherries. It keeps coming up nine o'clock. <laughs> Incidentally, Philip, you're to punch the time clock every day. Punch it. You stand in front of it and I'll splinter it. <laughs> I ain't punching no time clocks. Now, just show me the office. Where is it? It's right across the hall here. Oh, come on. I'm so anxious to see what it looks like. Oh, look, Phil. Phil, they got your name on the door. They have? Yeah, look. Mr. Alice Faye. <laughs> Fine thing, using my married name instead of my maiden name. <laughs> well, Philip, here's your office. Oh, Phil, this is a beautiful office. It's so decorative. Don't you just love it? I don't know. Don't you think the decor is a trifle rococo? What was that? That's French, for it's got a lousy color scheme. <laughs> You'll get used to it. Well, I'd better run along so you can get to work. I'll see you tonight, honey. Huh? All right, honey, okay. Oh, Frank. Man. I'm going to go nuts in this place. I don't even like the way it's furnished. Well, we'll refurnish it. I see. Well, good morning, Harris. Oh, hello, Mr. Scott. I'm happy to see you on the job this early. Uh, what time did you get here? Eight o'clock last night. I was just getting ready to go home. So long, Scotty. Everything's in uh, order. Just, Everything's just, 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 just. <laughs> Come back here. What time did you get in? Well, if you must know, I got here at nine this morning. Splendid, my boy. I'm glad to see that you're Johnny on the spot. After all, punctuality is a virtue. A good beginning means a good finish. Or, as I always say, the early bird... Gets the word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this kid really comes on with some jazzy expressions. <laughs> well, how do you like your new office, Harris? We don't. <laughs> Remley, what are you doing here? 
I'm redecorating the office. We'll put the bar in that corner, the pool table in the middle, <laughs> and the pinball machine over there. We don't like your furniture. You don't like it? Do you realize every piece in this room is an antique? They're all expensive imports, and they're beautiful. I think they're crummy. <laughs> Rimley, hmm? why must you torment me? Why don't you go someplace? <laughs> You're old enough to run away from home. <laughs> Why don't you go to Tibet and become a high lama? <laughs> Curly, is there any future in being a high lama? Well, I guess it's better than being a low lama. <laughs> Maybe I can become a middle lama. Ah, don't pay nothing. They ain't organized. You <laughs> Will you two shut up? Remley, I'm not going to tolerate you any longer. You ain't. I'm the one who's being tolerant. I have what no do you mean wait a minute, here, fellas. You you wait a minute. Will you hold it a minute? Me? I have to listen. Just, I don't even know. Will you just keep quiet just a minute? Gentlemen. <laughs> this is my first day at the office. Can't we make it a happy one? <laughs> Why do you always have to argue this way? Why don't you two make up? Why don't you be friends? Curly's right, Scott. We're acting like children. Let's forget the past and shake hands. Well, all right. Now, come on, Scotty. I want to be your friend. Shake hands. All right. Okay. Gad, what a clammy hand. <laughs> Sign of a weak character. <laughs> now look, Remley. I can't trust anybody who shakes hands like that. I wonder if I could have him assassinated. <laughs> look, Harris, you're here to work, and work you will. Now get behind your desk and start thinking. Anything in particular you want me to start thinking about? Well, you might try thinking about Rexall for a change. Try to come up with an idea that might be beneficial to the organization. I have to go downtown, but I'll be back at five, and don't you dare leave this office until I return. Now get to work. Slave driver. Huh. Fine way to talk to me, the mm. star of his radio program. Mm. Me, whose picture is in the current issue of Look magazine, which may be found on any newsstand, railroad station, dentist office, all any right, place. All right, all right. Don't overdo it. You got it all in. <laughs> Now, you better get to work, Curly. Oh, Frankie, I can't work in an office on such a beautiful day. This routine ain't for me. Up in the morning Out on the job Work like the devil for my pay but that lucky old son Got nothing to do But rule around him all day Show me that river Take me across Wash all my troubles away Like that lucky old son Give me nothing to do But roll around heaven all day Love of love can't you know he's fine Tears all in his eyes Send down that crown with a silver line Lift him to pass I'm up in the morning, back on the job, work like the devil for my pay, but that lucky old son, got nothing to do, but rule around heaven all day, fuss with my woman, toil for my kids. 
wet till I'm wrinkled and gray. But that lucky old son, he got nothing to do but rule around heaven all day. Good Lord above, can't you know I'm pining? Tears all in my Send down that cloud with a silver lining. Left me to paradise. Take me across, wash all my troubles away. Like that lucky old son, give me nothing to do but roll around him all day. It looks like I'm going to get stuck in this all. No, not necessarily. All you got to do is show that you have the company's interests at heart, and maybe you'll get a parole. Oh. <laughs> but how am I going to show them that I got their interests at heart? Well, What's think you gonna... of something to increase Scott's sales. That ought to make the old pill roller happy. <laughs> yeah. Increase your sales, huh? Sure. Well, if we put our heads together, maybe we could figure something out. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see now. What could I do to increase the sales of Rexall? And here, minding my own business, I get fouled. <laughs> what are you doing here? How'd you know I was here, Julius? I heard you had your working for a living, and I came down to see you with my own little eyes. <laughs> well, now that you've seen it, beat it. We got something to do. Yeah, we're busy. We got to put our heads together. That's a good idea. Why don't you assemble the parts? I'll get some glue. <laughs> Ignore them. Don't pay no attention. All right. Well, now, look, Remley, how can we help their business? Mm. Curly, I got it. What's one of the most beneficial drugs ever discovered? Penicillin? Yeah. What do they make it out of? Mold. Okay. If mold is so good, why don't we invent an aspirin made out of mold? You think there'll be much demand for a moldy aspirin? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about bread mold. Bread mold? Common bread ain't good enough for us. Let's make it out of, out of rye crisp mold. <laughs> Better yet, let's make it out of seven-layer cake mold. <laughs> Why don't you make it out of matzo mold? <laughs> <laughs> matzo mold? Yeah, then your company will be the only one that sells kosher aspirin. <laughs> Look, Julius, will you cut it out? We're trying to hold a job, Wait trying to make a buck. Wait a minute. The kid's got something there. But there's no telling how far this can go. We could have kosher aspirin, aspirin cacciatore, aspirin stroganoff. <laughs> there ain't no call for aspirin stroganoff. <laughs> Boiled aspirin with horseradish Keep sauce? Keep quiet. <laughs> You're getting worse than he is. Trying to help. Well, you can't help. They ain't gonna buy aspirin stroganoff with pork. Why don't you stop? You're hanging around them too long, kid. <coughs> now, maybe we'd better stay away from the drugs anyway. You know, they got great scientists working on that stuff. Yeah, that's right. Hey. Hmm? Hey, Remley, why don't we run a sale? Yeah, that'll help business. Let's have one of them one-cent sales. Now, Frankie, you got it. <laughs> Do you guys know anything about running a one-cent sale? Do we know... <laughs> Happens to be my business. <laughs> Come on, Frankie, let's get that one cent sale roll. We'll go into Scott's office and get things started. We'll make a few phone calls and have this thing going in an hour. <laughs> Now, 
listen to that. <laughs> hey, Frankie, we did it. Hey, the sale is a success. Hey, look at that crowd. We sold practically everything in the store. Hey, Remley, it's almost 5 o'clock. Scotty will be back soon. Will he be surprised? Yeah. I can just see his face now. Harry, Remley, what's going on here? What are all these people doing here? What caused this riot? We did? Yes, sir. We just ran the biggest one-cent sale in the history of the Rexall Company. You nincompoops! We're going to have a one-cent sale October 19th. <laughs> See, Remley likes our idea so much, he's stealing it. <laughs> we better run another one in October. But I guarantee you won't do as good as we did. Look at these receipts, Scotty. We cleaned everything off of the shelves. We sold 10,750 items. How much did you take in? 10,750 pennies. <laughs> You mean you sold everything for a penny an item? Well, of course, how else do you think you could run a one-cent sale? <laughs> don't, 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 how did a schmoll like this ever get to be a big shot in the company? <laughs> he don't even know how to run a I, sale. Don't be too hard you, with him. He ain't had much schooling. Oh. Harris, get out of here! Get out of this building! Don't ever come near me or I'll... I'll don't try to thank us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, Ramley. He's so happy he's crying with joy. Come on, let's get out of here. I can't sta hate to stay. I just can't stand to see a man ball. Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. Meanwhile, here's a lady with a question for our Rexall family druggist. You've probably been asked this many times before, but I'd like to know how you'd sum up the story of Rexall quality. Well, ma'am, I think I'd put it this way. Always a little better, always a little more. What do you mean, exactly? Well, let's take an example. Rexall's famous mouthwash and gargle called MI-31 antiseptic. Thanks to its special MI-31 formula, this antiseptic kills contacted germs in a matter of seconds when used full strength, yet it won't harm the delicate membranes of your mouth and throat. I see. That's what you mean by always a little better. Exactly, ma'am. And here's what I mean by always a little more. Many other antiseptics come in 12 to 14 ounce bottles, but Rexall gives you 16 ounces of MI-31, a full pint, and at no greater cost than other leading brands of lesser quantity. This policy of always striving to give a little better quality and a little more quantity is Rexall's creed. And it's one of the big reasons why, wherever you see the orange and blue Rexall sign on the window, there's a family druggist who will tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. <laughs> Folks, this is Phil again. This year's nationwide polio epidemic is the most serious in our history. Money available to pay for the care of polio victims is being used up at the rate of $100,000 a day. And unless additional money is received immediately, this fund will be wiped out in two more weeks. Look, you know and I know that this mustn't happen. So send your dimes and dollars to polio, care of your post office. Good night, everybody. Good night. This program was produced and directed by Paul Phillips. Included in today's cast was Gail Gordon. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis, and Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Alice Bay appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. This is Bill Foreman wishing good health to all from Rexall. <laughs> Stay tuned now for the adventures of Sam Spade, which follows immediately on NBC.